Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and whilst my outfit may be bright and this fantastic Hillman Imp is bright, we have been treated to a dose of British November weather. So it's rather dreary on today's test, apologies, but hopefully I'm going to get to show you one of the most exciting cars I've ever wanted to drive. It's the Hillman Imp. I've been trying to book one for iDriver Classic for well over a year. It's a car I personally have always wanted to own and in short, I'm very excited to show you it today. So we're gonna kick the video off with a tour around the outside. I'll tell you a little bit about the car, a little bit of the history, and I'll tell you what she's like to drive. And best of all, because we're at Drive Dad's car, if you watch this and think, I'd like a go to Hillman Imp too, you can have a go as well. But I'll tell you all about that as we go through the video. But first of all, let's kick off with a walk around the outside. The Hillman Imp is just one of those cars that everyone remembers, but you really don't see anymore. When did you last see one in the wild? Now, whilst it's a car of the 60s and 70s, the plans for the car kicked off way back when in the mid 50s, amongst things like the Suez oil crisis, petrol rationing, and of course, the rise and rise of the very small car. Now, Roots recognised that although their medium and large car market was covered with a selection of fantastic quality vehicles, their smaller car market was one which was kind of lacking because they didn't have anything. And they also recognised that their UK buyers were really buying into, in quite a majority, the one litre variants. So they thought, we're not going to miss out on this market share, let's produce something small. Now Parks and Fry, who were given the project and kicked off, had a very specific brief. The car had to carry two adults, two children, it had to reach 60 miles per hour, had to give a fuel economy on test of 60 miles per gallon, it had to use a rear engine layout, and best of all, it had to be fun to drive. Now I've also heard from many different people that the car was also designed with gentlemen who wore hats in mind, which is why the roof height is so high, but I feel like that's a bit of an old wives tale because I've not found any proof of that anywhere. Now the first prototype, the slug, was rejected on styling grounds. It looked too much like a bubble car for Roots liking, and then the stage two, you should really Google it because it's amazing, looks kind of impish, but it also has hints of things like the Austin A30, the Ford Anglia. It's quite an interesting car in its own right. Now, whilst all this styling business was going on, the team at Coventry Climax were approached. Now, they'd be making all aluminium race engines, and so the team at Root said, what can you do for the Hillman Imp? This then led to the Hillman Imp sporting the 875cc aluminium engine, kicked out 39 brake horsepower and had an overhead camshaft. The engine was the first to be put into a mass production vehicle which had the alley head and block and rear engined. I should also probably mention the semi-trailing arm independent rear suspension system which was put into counteract understeer from choosing the rear engine positioning. The car was then fitted out with a transaxial, transaxial? Transaxel, which was designed by Adrian West, who'd come over from experienced Simca, Renault and Fiat. Then, once all was said and done, it came down to the factory. Now, Roots, of course, just wanted to expand their headquarters at Coventry, but due to the government loan stipulations, the factory had to be put into an area which was in need of investment, which then meant the imp was produced near Glasgow. And it did a good job because it provided over 6,000 jobs to workers in the local area. Now when it was finished, the car had a wheelbase of 82 inches, a length of 141 inches, and at saloon level height, it was sitting at 52 inches, making it the smallest car Roots had ever taken to market. The engine size at launch was the 875cc, as we've mentioned, and it was fitted with a four-speed manual gearbox. At one point, the car at basic spec was so cheap with no optional extras, it was the cheapest new car on the British market. Now you might think with all that knowledge, that competitive pricing, investment and development, that by the time the car launched in 1963, everything would be done and dusted and ready to go. But unfortunately, many of the earlier cars were plagued with problems, like overheating, water pump failures, and this that meant that the car became a bit of a hot potato on the used car market meaning the competition like the Mini was a safer prospect for a buy. So unfortunately, it kind of got stripped out by the competition. And in fact, a really interesting thing to know is, is 50% of all the imps ever made were made in the first three years of production. And in total, just over 440,000 were made. 
The production ended in 1976, but not before all those badge variants had launched, including the Comorant Van in 65, the Sunbeam, the Singer and the Husky. Van production ended in 1970 and car production ended in 1976, bringing the imp of many badges to an end. Now before we kick off looking round and go for a drive, I met a lovely gentleman at the museum who test drove this imp as part of his drive dad's car experience. So I asked him, what was it like, what did you think of the car and what memories the imp held for him? Hi there, uh, I'm Graham Terry, uh, I'm at the, uh, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Great British Car Journey. The Great British <laughs> Car Journey and uh, I've just finished having a, a drive in this uh, magnificent little Hillman Imp which is a, a car that brings back many memories, I think it was my uh, third car that I had after a Austin Mini 7 Moggy 1000 and then I actually paid more than £100 and, and bought one of these and it brings back uh, many memories it's, uh, yeah, it's a car that uh, I always enjoy driving and uh, to drive it around today it's, uh, it's been something special it's, uh, it's totally, well all these cars are totally unlike uh, the modern ones. We're cosseted with uh, automatic this, automatic that. And this one, it's the, it's the driver that does the work, not the car. It's a really weird experience coming into this because whilst everybody else was hoping for a Mini, I was there like, oh, I want a Hillman Imp. And now I'm here, it's really strange because they say you should never meet your heroes, but actually I'm still quite enjoying it. The one thing I would say is, is that if you think about this being a competitor for the Mini, I do feel like the Mini's dash is a better layout. But I do quite like this. Watch this. So I want to turn the key. The uh, <laughs> the warning lights are absolutely massive. Quite often on a Morris Minor, you'll be watching them. They're just tiny little lights that are flickering. With that, you would not miss if something was wrong with your oil pressure gauge. Now, the dash on this is enormously simple there is barely anything going on over here we have i guess this is where the radio was um it kind of is what it is it's an empty space at the moment you know let's be honest you're not going to put a concourse car out on test are you but as you'll see when we take this out it's a lovely example nonetheless now here we've got our ashtray this just seems to be some sort of blanking plate and then we've just got the two gauges so we've got fuel at the top temperature at the bottom and then over here we have got our miles per hour and then this enormous oil pressure gauge because people must have been really worried about that now over on my right hand side we have got the wipers let me see if i can just what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a bit of water on the screen. So it's got electric washers on it now. Just show you these. Quite a good speed, to be honest. So yes, you've got your wipers on a turn there, and you've got your electric washer there. And then... That's the heater. It's a bit puny, but... Look, we're not out in a Rolls Royce, are we? We can't be expecting the world. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. As you can see, everything is remarkably simple. But this is that era of super mini, simple, joyful motoring. So let's take it for a spin round, see what we think, and uh, see if it lives up to the hype. I'm going to get this young lady started up. Now, she is being a little bit... I mean, look, I'm pretty grumbly. I don't like the cold weather either. Hold on. Now I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, show you from the back as well.
Oh, she's adorable. I absolutely love her. I want one. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. Oh, I really want one. And look how light the steering is. Oh, this is so nice. Oh my God. Right, I'm just gonna test the brakes. Let's have a look at the brakes. How good are they? Hold on. Hey, they're all right. Oh, please, honestly, if you're booking in here, get this in booked. It's brilliant. I'm going to tell you a little story at home. So way back when, when I was a child in the 90s, an obscenely long time ago, my mum had an Asia Rockster. Now, no one's ever heard of these cars, but you're not going to believe this. Look what's here in this yard by Drive Dad's car. It's an Asia Rockster. I actually... Oh, I feel quite emotional because I'm just going to talk to you about it while we're here actually. I feel really emotional because when I was a child, when I grew up, I thought, oh, that's so cool. I would love to drive that. And they just don't exist anymore. They're never about. And to say that there's one here at Drive Dad's car, I mean, it's not at Drive Dad's car. It's in the car park at one of the buildings next door. Oh, anyway, it's uh, quite appropriate really, isn't it? I honestly have not seen one since I was a child, and ours was an M Reg as well. We were M254 JNY. A very missed car, actually, very enjoyable. Now, coming back to the imp and forgetting my own life story for a minute. Very quick to come up through the gears. Handling is an absolute. Oh, it's just. I mean, look, as you can probably feel, it's very bumpy, it's a bit tr -tr 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 as we go along, but I wasn't expecting the world. Look at it, it's so much fun. Now, if you're booking in for one of these test drives, can I just say, you definitely need to book me in. When you take this stuff out and you take it round this little route, because you get three or four laps round it's about 20 minutes you get and you get your instructor with you so it's like no stress no drama just really enjoy your little day out have a good time and then give the car back at the end they've got mechanics on site that help keep them running and really it's just a nice non-stressful no commitment way to try some different cars because I didn't realize I was going to like the imp as much as I have and oh, I don't want to give it back it's really good fun let's stop putting minis on a pedestal and start getting more behind these I do not regret for one minute coming out of the imp it's one of my favorite test drives of 2021 and best of all is that I can share it with you because you can come here as well, you can try it. And if you do, let me know what you think of it because I've really enjoyed it. I think the whole experience of taking a car out here is really relaxed. You do have to book, of course. And that's where it ends because guess what? I had loads of microphone issues on this shoot because it was really wet water got into the mic and it's basically destroyed my kit which is fantastic but yes i've had a fantastic wonderful day at drive dad's car this won't be the last video from my experience and best of all is you can share it too so if you want to book it i've put all the details in the description box below prices start from 49 pounds and it includes your museum admission so really if there's one christmas present that you're asking for this year it's probably admission to the great british car journey and also a test drive on the sim because it's the best now until next sunday when i'll bring you another exciting car take care and drive safely